morning decorators of the interweb. It's Phil Beckwith, back with you to give you some bite-sized nugget chunks of information that will help you improve on your airless spraying. So um, let's crack on with it. I'm going to say five tips. Uh, I think by the time I finish, because you know what I'm like for talking, um, we'll probably cover a few more things than five. I'm going to give you five tips that I'm going to um, give you information on to help you improve on your eye te technique of spraying and also um, just bits and pieces that you'll find interesting to help you along on your journey for airless spraying. Some of the tips that I'm going to give you also um, work with HVLP but today because I've got the Graco um, GXFF out to spray some woodwork on this job that I'm doing I thought I'd just talk through a few bits and pieces to help you um, improve on what you're doing. You might have the same problems that I've had over the years and thinking how do I get around that or you might even be saying Phil you're giving five um, bits of information out there's a few more bits of information which I'm happy for you to give the comments when you do that smashing the like button giving the comments ring that bell we've gone through all that before I've um, probably exhausted it but no I'm going to give you five tips um, on spraying that um, you can add any of the tips in the comments below because I'm just touching on five now that's going to help you but basically let's start with this um, GX FF fine finish now one of the first things that I always do when I'm setting up my kit, I take the gun guard off, just unscrewing it. And I've mentioned this before in previous videos, but you might not have seen them. I have some petroleum jelly or Vaseline. Now, I always like to run a bit of Vaseline around the, the threads, just like that. Can you see that? Just running it around the threads. Then I put the tip guard on and it just helps it lubricate it. And the other thing that helps it with is if you get a bit of overspray or spray in the air and it starts sticking around all these threads, you don't want it sticking the thread of the guard together that you're struggling getting it off because that only needs to be hand tight. Don't forget, that's hand tight. You don't need to be getting any pliers or spanners or anything like that, just hand tight. And then you can slip you spray tipping. Now, this is woodwork that I'm doing. So if you're in America, you're gonna call it trim, but we're over in the UK, we're in England, we don't call it trim, trim is on a car. We're in a house, it's called woodwork, skirting's architraves, that's what I'm gonna be calling it. It's gonna be called the woodwork. Right, I've got a 110 gold Tri-Tech, can you see that? It's focusing on my face. It's a gold 110 um, Tri-Tech spray tip. It's a, it's five, a fine finish spray tip. I'm just going to run, just on the sides, don't want it into the orifice or anything, just on the sides and on the base, I'm just putting a bit of Vaseline on there. Right, and that, that fits in nicely. Right, that's one of the tips, but it's not actually one of the tips that I want to be talking about. So we're all set up there. Right, next, when you come to spray, you've got to get your consistency of your paint right. Now your consistency of your paint or viscosity can vary. And I'm not going to be telling you how you should be doing it straight away because every job's going to be slightly different. I'm spraying with Helmi 30. Now it's a lovely paint to spray. Depending on your temperature of your room, depending on the temperature of your paint, you're going to be spraying at a different temperature or you're going to find it harder to spray or easier to spray. Now again, I'm not going to be telling you how your setup should be because you've got to gauge your actual environment. Now, what I find is this spray is lovely, brilliant, it's brilliant stuff to spray, but a splash of water in it does help it. Now, when I say a splash of water, I've tipped probably half the amount into a, another clean tub, right? It's used to have helmet in it. I've tipped it in there and I've put a splash of water in it. Now, you don't want to overwater it because you're going to make your, thin, your paint too thin. Now, the guide is if you can get it, let's get this good to if you can get it just running back into itself and the paint, let's see if we can get this on the camera. I'll angle you down. If we can get 
that running back into itself, that's there, and it doesn't sit on the surface, you're not far wrong for having the actual paint near perfect. So get your paint consistency right. So we're, we're there with that. The next one, get your paint consistency right. Strain your paint. You're doing fine finish work, strain your paint. So in there, you can see in the hopper, I've got one of those little, it's got a vegetable bag in it. Now that'll strain quite a bit of thicker paint um, with chunky bits and bits in it. You never know what paints, um, what bits are in the paint. But what I do, and you've probably seen it on my Instagram, don't forget we've got an Instagram page, back with Decorators, um, an old pair of tights. Get quite a nice pair of tights that's been used. Uh, jokes, we don't want any comments or jokes, but used old tights, you can wash them through if you want. But as long as there's no holes in it, you can cut the legs, tie a knot in the end, turn it the other way around so the knot's on the inside, stretch, stretch it over. Sorry about that, I was talking about the stockings and the tights and tights and the stockings and um, I just had to nip off for a wee. No, I'm only joking. No, uh, just got disturbed so I had to just stop the video. Um, so where were we? We're on about, I've got the um, vegetable bag in the hopper. That just really supports the pair of tights or stockings, whatever you're using, that's um, straining your paint. So for now, let's just recap. I've thinned the paint. Don't thin it too much because you don't want it like water. You want it a nice consistency. And also don't forget, sometimes when your paint's a little bit thicker, you have to turn up the pressure. If it's a little bit thinner, and once you get your pressure um, right, um, the paint consistency, you, it'll spare a dream. Now, fine finishing. Always start with a lower pressure and work your way up because you don't want the tails, you don't want the tails coming on your spray fan pattern. As I mentioned earlier, I've got a 110 gold spray tip. That's um, quite a nice tip to spray woodwork with. The thing is, you've got to make sure that you get your consistency if you paint right, because if your paint's too thick, you'll be up in your pressure. You don't want to do that. You want to be spraying this to lower pressure so you haven't got the overspray and you haven't got clouds of dust of spray in the air. But also, don't be spraying too close to the surface as well, because you can get bounce back off that. But we're not going on about spray techniques like that now, we're just talking about the five tips that's going to help you improve on your spraying. So we touched on thinning your paint, we touched on your spray tip, putting some um, Vaseline around it. Now, uh, one thing I should have mentioned, when you've got your spray tips and you've used them, you've washed them out, you've flushed them through water, I've got, because it's, talk about basic stuff, I've just got a jam jar, I've got some tape around it, just hold it in place. I've got some jam jar with some, oh, stop phone ringing. Back again, the phone was ringing. I've cancelled it because I don't know anybody in Preston. Right, so going back to, I've got a jam jar, I've got some gun cleaner, um, cellulose thinners. And once I've washed through, because obviously I work with a lot of water-based paint, once I've washed through the spray tip through the machine, you know how you blast it through and clean spray tip so there's no um, paint still in it, clean out with water, because water's the thinner for water-based paints. I just drop the spray tip in this um, gun cleaner, stroke cellulose thinners. Let it soak overnight, um, that just keeps, uh, keeps them clean. It allows a bit of gun cleaner to go through the orifice, so if you have got any paint still left in it, it will soften it all up. If you find that you've got a bit of block paint in, now I've bought some of these, the actual tip um, orifice cleaning needles. Now, they're tiny, they're really, really small, and they can go through the orifice of your needle. Now, I don't know whether you'll see that, you won't see it. That's very fine at the end and it goes thicker. Now the ones I've got will be cleaning out spray needle orifices um, 11 and below. So if you've got um, a 110, that'll be fine. If you've got a 2, 208 to 206, you get where I'm coming from. So it's um, just push it through, just twist it around both ends, one side then the other, and then you can try and flush it through with some more water on your um, pressure you'll be spraying on, not too much pressure, you're not, you're not wanting to spray at 2,000, you just probably seven, 800,000 PSI just for flushing your tip out. So yeah, that's another tip, but it's not in my five um, golden nugget tips for spraying, but I just thought I'd tell you that, because people will say, how do you stop blocked um, tip on your needle? Right, get some of these. You get them from decent spray, um, well, 
where you buy spray tips from probably will sell them, so that's that. Right, back to the paint. So we've got the paint in there, we've got the paint with the hopper, with the um, meshes, stroke, tights, because that's how we're doing it. Right, what to come on to, getting your spray pressure right. Obviously, start with the lower pressure, work your way up. Get rid of your tails by increasing your pressure. If you find that your paint's too thick, you might want to thin it slightly, because what, what you might come across is you're spraying onto the surface, when it dries, it looks a little bit of a camera finish, a bit orange peely. That might be because your paint's actually a, bit, a little bit too thick. Again, this will come with experience and a bit of practice, you'll know what you're doing. Right, so for now, let's call it a day on the setup of the spray um, kit there. I think we've covered everything there. If I haven't, obviously when you're smashing that like button, give some comments. I might have missed something that you think, Phil, that's really important, let's get it down so other people can read the comments below. But I think we've covered everything. We've got Vaseline on the threads. We've got the spray tip. Don't forget, oh, I did tell you, spray tip, I'm spraying with a 110. Now, a question to you, you can comment, what filtering the gun should I be using for a 110? Comments below. I'll tell you at the end if I remember, but when I edit it, I'll probably give you the comment in some text. So I'm gonna to say to you, I've got a 110 spray tip. There's a gun filter. What color filter should I be using in there? I won't tell you now, we'll put it in the comments at the end. So that's the question of the day. Right, back to spraying. Right. What you've got to do, you've got to keep your flow. You don't want to be stopping and starting. We're not, it's not like painting with a brush that you can do length of skirting, stop, pick up again. When you're spraying with this sort of kit, you need to be quite quick. You don't want to be going too slow because the slower you go, the pressure will be, put, be putting a lot of paint on the surface. So if I can just angle you down, you can probably see me on that bit of skirting there. Right, the skirting there, you want to be going from one side to the other, virtually in one fell sweep. You don't want to be going six inch stopping, then another six inch, because as you stop, that'll be putting paint on an area that you don't want too much paint. So ideally, you'll probably see me on this, go from one end to the other in one go, if you can do it. That's not always gonna be the case that you can do it all in one. Might be a long length of skirting, you might have obstacles to go around, you might have to just stop and start. Now I find, and again, you're gonna give me some comments. Am I doing it wrong? Am I not doing it wrong? Am I giving you a tip that you think, oh, that's a good idea, let's try that. You might have a long length of skirting that you can't do all in one sweep. You might have a narrow fan pattern. This is a 110, so that's giving you roughly about a two inch spray um, fan. I find if it's a long length and I'm struggling, particularly on the, the coats that are built up to the final coat, I like to go across the length and then, I know it's not a good practice, I like to just feather the tip out. So instead of keeping to the surface parallel and keeping the distance, what, what are we keeping the distance? Oh, sorry, what, eight, nine, ten inches away from the surface, that your gauge, feather it out. Just so, just feather it out and flick it back in. It's not a good practice to do, but if it helps you get the finish that you require, that's the way you want to probably be looking at doing it. So on that, I could do it in one, all the way across, up and down, you probably do about three, three passes with that because it's quite deep skirting, that's probably a seven inch deep skirting, seven inch there, so I'll go from that side to that side, then back and then across the top, make sure the top edge is covered. So that's there, right. So that's one of my tips, probably move quickly. Don't, over, don't overthink it, don't over, go over the surface because you'll be building up the paint. Now, I'll just take you off the stand now because I just want to show you something that I can't show you actually while I'm sitting down here. So, get rid of that. This is the one I, I'm not saying it's a problem, but you probably find um, when you're spraying, when you're spraying a door frame, right, again, we're talking, we want to do it all in one go, don't we? We don't want to be doing it like we do a brush. You don't want to be doing the sides then the face, then the top, then the inner edges, the rebates. You really want to be doing them all in one go. And when I mean all in one go, sweep, right. You'll probably see it on other videos, people are doing it. This is what you need to be doing, right. That there is the spray gun. I'm gonna go up, 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 up. And as I get to the top, oh, I've lost you. As I get to the top, 
I still carry on and I go round the top and then I quickly rotate it round if I can or I might be able to go in one I come down the side as, as well all in one so if you can see me go up 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 across across and then down all the way down that's how you do the inners right how would you do the frame I'd start actually with the sides I'd start with the sides I'd go up the sides I mean these edge sides across the top if needs be and down the side there then I would come on the main flat of the architrave I'd come up I'd come up I'd come up all the way up to there and then I'm twisting round I'm coming round I'm coming round then I'm back down so down to the bottom and then that's when I would do the inner parts of the frames I'd come can you see me? I'd come up, 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 I'd come up in one go, I'm coming all the way around, and then I'm coming back down again. Now, with time, patience, and practice, it'll become second nature to you. I've tried to explain it not spraying because I'm holding a camera, I've got the gun. So I'll put, put that down, I might be able to explain it here. So, what we're doing, we're doing the edges, we're doing the edges first. I like to do the edges first, then come up from the bottom, all the way up, over the flat there, all the way in one go, down, and then to the bottom again. And then I'll start with that inner part of the frame, coming round, then down there. It's a bit jerky camera movement. Right, you understand that, hopefully. Comments below if you don't. Now, you might have picked up on, you won't see. Now this is a door, you can see I've taped up the hinge screws this is a door that opens into the room so getting it right this is the actual latch locking edge right that is classed as the inside part of the room that side of the frame is classed as the room the opposite side because it's the hinge edge because if you imagine the doors opening like that opening and closing so where I've got the hinges because we've got different colors the colour of that room is taken in with the main casement of the frame. So that strip there, I've taped it all up, you can probably just see, taped it all up, taped it tight to the edge. That will be detaped when we've finished. You'll find that that colour is pointing and the colour that I'm doing on the outer and across the top there, and that frame there is Charleston grey. Now these are Farrah and Ball colours. Shh, they mixed it. Again, I've mentioned this in previous videos, the customer's happy with a near match. You're never going to get the same colour as Farron Ball. Farron Ball paints are lovely, and if the customer was wanting Farron Ball paints, we'd be doing Farron Ball paints, but price-wise, because it's a big build, they didn't want to pay um, the premium for the Farron Ball. I love Farron Ball, don't get me wrong, I love spraying Farron Ball, I love using Farron Ball. I've got no issue with Farron Ball, but on this job, the customer's happy to have a nearest as possible match um, to Farrow and Ball, but we're doing it in Ticarilla. So that, that, that's the by the by, right? So get your edges right. If it's inside the room, it's the right hand and the top. The opposite side of the room will be the hinge edge. Now, if you're struggling understanding that, just give us some comments below and I'll explain it all again to you, but I think we're covering that for now, right? So we've gone through that process. Another tip I wanna give you because it's not very easily to see on there. I'll show you on this one. I'm gonna just go up some steps. Oh, bang, 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 bang. Now these steps are wooden, they're brilliant. You can still buy them. Brax ladders in Nottingham still sell wooden. Class one or industrial ladder steps. Brilliant they are. Now this is a bit more of a, oh, you're gonna lose me with the light. This is a bit more of a architrave frame. Now, I bet when you've been spraying, you've found you've had runs around this top area here. I've done it myself, it's not, it's not something to be proud of, it's not something to shout about too much, is it? Bit of runs around the top? Nah, it doesn't matter. Right, now, that is probably because you've come in a little bit too close, you could have either stopped here, like doing painting with a brush, we'd normally paint that, wouldn't we? Stop and then pick up on there. Same principle with the spray. If you stop too much there, you're getting a double build up of paint. 
Now, the secret is, what I've mentioned earlier, keep it, keep it flowing quite quick with your gun, all the way over the top, keep it moving. Don't hold your gun too close to the corners, that's where you're gonna get your build up of pain. Now, it's not the end of the world if you start seeing a little bit of a run on there. Now, what I've got down here, I'll show you. This is, add this to the list of tips. You've got, you know, from the pound shop, or Tesco, Morrison's, anywhere like that. Right, you know these plastic scourers? They're brilliant for cleaning your spray gun and equipment down. Now, if you turn it around, it's sponge. That finish there is almost like a spray finish when you start utilizing this. So if you get a bit of a run across there, get that, just wet it so it's moist, dob it out. Just dob it out like that. And you'll find when it dries, you won't know the difference between the sponging effect or the spray effect. It just loses it, right? Back in the day when I was at college, we used to teach the decorative paints um, treatment course and sponging was one of the um, finishers, but obviously using a real sponge, which is probably not too... Um, well, I don't think Greta would be too happy if we said we were using natural sponges for decorative paint finishes, but that's what we used to do. But again, this man-made sponge, just dob any of your little runs out. And the same goes with the architecture around the top. You might suddenly see a little bit of a run where you've gone a bit heavy. Just dob it out. Don't use a brush because you'll put brush marks in it. Just dob it out with that and away you go. You'll probably not even know once it's dried out. So that's another tip for you. How many tips are we up to now? I can't remember, I can't remember how many tips we've done. So sponge, tips with the Vaseline, tips with thinning the paint, getting your consistency right. We've got tips on making sure that you've got um, tights, thinning your paint with the um, hopper. Oh, I think we've, I can't even think now. We've got tips on spraying in one go, tips on doing the skirting, don't stop on the corners. Work with it because once you know what you're doing, you'll go, oh, so simple. This is something really simple that I've not even thought of. So let's just give you a bit of a pan round of what I'm doing. It's not, let's move these. It's not a big room. It's not a big room. So I've got skirting there all the way around. Skirting all the way around. I've got a big door there that I'm doing. And I'm coming down and then across. You can see I've got my spray mask as well. Don't forget, decent spray mask. So are we covering everything at the minute? I think we are. I'll come back to you if there's anything else, but for now I'll give you a few tips on how to spray and improve on your spraying. If you know how to do all this, it's not going to be um, too much benefit to you, but there are people that are new to spraying, I'll put it back on the stand, that are probably benefit from just having these little on there little tips that help you improve on your finish and another thing to mention is don't forget denib between coats this woodwork was bare wood it's had three coats it's had um, a light primer coat of helmy undercoat and then because it's not a big room it's dried off got the temperature of the room up it's all dried off nicely and i put two more coats of helmy just to build the um, paint finish body up of the woodwork so now I have two coats of the Helmy 30 finish colour, which as you can see, just on the mixing stick, it's a dark colour. So that against white is going to be quite spectacular. I'm going to enjoy doing it. So for now, I'll just say thanks for listening. I'll add a bit more to it if there's um, something you need to know, but give us a thumbs up, comments, smash the like button, and I'll see you on the next one, or see you in the next little bit of addition that I'm going to put into this video.
Can you see what I did there? I did the skirting, I brought the frame in all the way across the top and down, brought the sides in. Now I'm hoping this will dry quite nicely. Got a little bit of a mist there, I don't want to go back over it, I'll catch it on the second coat. And then got the woodwork there. So I think you get the principle of what I'm doing, don't you? Keeping it come back. Keeping it flowing, paint not too thick, not too thin, and you can get it right. And technique is straight up and round, don't stop on yourself, particularly on frames. Probably doesn't matter so much on your skirting boards, you might be get away with it, but as I said, if you do need to stop on skirtings because it's a long um, stretch, or even on door frames, it might be a long casement, just feather it into itself, stop. If you know you're going to stop, feather it out. When you come back into it, feather it back in. You know what I mean by feathering. Come into further distance, back to your distance that you spray at, which is what, about 10 inch, probably about 10 inch on this. Depends how it feels, but you see what I've done? Charleston Grey, it's a dark colour, isn't it? But that's it for now. I think I'll give you enough information. You know what I'm like, I like to keep about 20, 25 minutes. Keep you talking. That looks spot on. I'll carry on. I'll probably put some finished photos on when I've done because the walls are actually going to be this colour as well. So thanks for listening to me. Cheerio. Bye bye. You see me? I don't know whether you could just see that. I couldn't get across this, it's too big. I couldn't move my steps quick enough. So I had to stop just there. And uh, as I stopped, I just feathered it away so it wasn't too heavy. Now I came and did that corner, I'm pointing down, in one sweep, so I went down into it and across. But when I joined up to where I was there, obviously I was a little bit further away and brought it in, again feathering. So once I brought it in, I went down, all the way down, and then back up on itself. So I'd missed a few little bits because of the way I was spraying, trying to reach, just wafted it in, got on the inside part, and then brought me outers, and brought them all in. And then once I could move the steps, and I could get this from ground level, well, it's gone behind the sheet, I did all that and brought the bottom in. I've gone across the base, skirting, again, we're not talking about trim, we're talking about skirting, so that's all done. To me, it looks like it's covered nicely. It looks a little bit wet at the minute. I'm hoping it wasn't too thin. This is the first of the two finished coats. Now, if I look at this and it dries and I'm not happy with it, I can always thicken the paint up because I've got some spare of the neat, or I could always thin it down. But the way it's on at the moment, I think it's going to fly out lovely and give a nice finish. Helmy 30 is a beautiful satiny finish, so being a dark colour like this, it's going to be quite effective. Now, one thing I need to just say to you, because you can see, I've got all the walls with bare plaster and they've been wash coated in Optiva Primer. I'm going on to the walls now with Optiva Primer. Whereas I was doing Optiva Primer and getting a little bit on the woodwork, trim, if you're in America, trim, on the woodwork, that Optiva Primer soaks nicely into bare wood or onto the woodwork. That can sand down when I came when it came to do the prep of the woodwork. Now, same principle. I've got the woodwork colour now onto the bare, well, 
Optiva Primer wall bare plaster primer. When you come to do the walls, and the walls are going to be in the same colour, it's always advisable. I always keep a little bit of sandpaper in, in my overall pocket. I just go round, once it's all dry, not while it's wet, once it's dry, go round all the overspray that's onto your walls, down there, I see it down there, cross skirting, a bit over my shoulder there. Just go over it, just nib it down, just make a key. Because what you don't want to be doing is emulsioning onto um, an eggshell stroke satin or even a gloss finish straight off. Just give it a key, just give it, give it a little bit of a rub down and then um, you've got no problems with adhesion. You shouldn't have any problems anyway. Just give it a nib down, coat onto that. Remember, I tape up the skirting, tape the frames, then I'll do the ceiling and walls. I'm gonna brush these and um, roll, so I'm not gonna spray these. It's not a big enough room that I need to worry about spraying. And again, this is a room that could quite possibly be um, damaged when people fit the wine racks and bits and pieces. So I want something that I can actually, let me focus, um, touching if, if I need to be. But for now, I think we've covered everything. I've covered the five tips I wanted to give you. I've given you some more information that you're gonna say, that's brilliant, Phil. You're giving me loads of information. I'm gonna be an expert by the end of the week. Hopefully you are. I just want you to improve on your spraying, or if you're not into spraying, I'd like you to take the next step into spraying. I could do me waving my finger, what tell you? Come on, next level painting and decorating. Let's just let's get the, the perception of the painter and decorator being the brush hand whopping out, cheapest chips, anybody can paint. Let's let's move away from that. We are the ones that make people's houses look the bee's knees. Think about it. We're going to be working smarter and not harder. We don't want to be earning the peanuts of the money. We're not picking up the breadcrumbs, are we? We want to be top end. That's why we're improving the way we're working. Dustless extraction on your sanding, your spraying, getting a better finish. Does spray make it any cheaper? No, it doesn't. Probably do the job a little bit quicker. Not a lot, but your finish is a lot better and that's what we're looking at doing. We're raising the game with the painter and decorator. I'm here to help. This medium, YouTube, is the new medium for me. I used to do the teaching at college, used to have the students, now I've got a broader broad, broader spectrum of students, haven't I? Think about it, I love it, love it, right. I might be getting that Porsche sooner, sooner rather than later. Just joking apart, right. Thanks for listening to me. See you on the next one, hope it helps. Just a bit of an update everybody, did the first coat, I used the 110 tip which sprayed fine, I thinned the paint just enough and it went on, nice wet, um, wet surface, got a little bit of a pimple in it which is nice because it means it's sprayed, it'll flow out, flowed out lovely. I've got the blower heater on, warm the air. Now I found that warming the air because it's a small room, was also warming the paint. Now warming the paint thins the paint. So when it came to the second coat, what I've actually gone and done, I've got a lovely, thanks to Tritech in America, because I've got I've had some problems with um, spray tips. They were good enough, brilliant customer service. They sorted me out with a new spray tip because I've got problems with it blocking. So um, I've got a, a 208 spray tip, which is um, quite a small orifice. It's very small. Now, because I knew the paint was thinner, and I wanted to just get a final coat on because I covered the first coat had covered lovely. The second coat, I just wanted a final waft of spray. So a 208 was a nice fine waft of spray to go over these frames, do the skirting, the big frame over there. You can see where I've done some sample um, spray fan patterns on that um, bagging. The 208 was just lovely, just as the final waft coat. I did get a couple of little runs on corners, can you see there? Just there, just on the architrave shaping. What I did was dobbed it out with that little bit of a sponge, lost it straight away, so by the time that dried for the first coat, they'd gone, you wouldn't have even noticed it, even if I left it like that. But coming for the second coat, I've just gently gone round with that 208, and it's given me a lovely finish. So that's a 208 tip. Always a good idea to have an arsenal of spray tips because if your paint's thinner, you need a smaller orifice size. 
because you probably found that the spray tip you're using was too big, putting too much paint on, so you can always drop down, either thicken your paint or drop down um, to a smaller um, spray tip orifice size. So that was a, a 208. So I started with a, a 110, then the 208. So really pleased with that, it's come out well. And um, again, that will be it now. Thanks for watching, thumbs up, comments, smash the like, we've done it all. But again, that's me, done and dusted. Another nice spray job for the customer. Thank you very much, bye bye.